Hey everybody, my name is Daryl O'Bear. Welcome back to Maya Mondays. So today what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you how we did the wet look of the sand in the original Bifrost launch video um, that Igor and I put together. So this is what it looked like. I'll play it back for, the, for those of you who maybe haven't seen it. So um, obviously the water is done with the Bifrost sim and then we have a little bit of a wet look happening that was actually done in post and I'm going to show you how to, uh, to generate that look. And you can either do it in post or in the render but I'll basically walk you through the process of, of what was done to get to that look. And it's actually um, it's pretty straightforward. It's a pretty cool trick. You can use it lots of different places. I actually used something very similar to this for uh, a movie I worked on, gosh, over 20 years ago before I worked at Alias. Um, it was an animated displacement map that we did sort of a very similar way for uh, for characters leaving trails behind themselves. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, Bifrost sim, which I've got loaded up here as a, as a, uh, a cached file. So this is the original file that was uh, meshed out. And, you know, obviously it's just, it's a, it's a massive cache file as it scrubs through here. What we want to do is we want to get a, um, a black and white map made of where this water in the sand interact with each other, basically from um, a camera that's directly above it. So if we zoom out here, you'll see that here's this camera. So what we want to do is we want to render out a mask file of where the water and the sand are hitting each other. So just a simple black and white file. So I went ahead and set up a render layer to do that with just, um, basically surface shaders assigned to that. So all you have to do is render this out and you can just actually use the um, hardware texture renderer now. So hardware renderer version 2 or hardware 2.0, the renderer that you can specify as your rendering engine can actually batch render now in 2015. That was something that was newly added. So for something like just a simple little mask file or garbage map file like this guy, I'm basically just going to render this top view um, 1K image that's that's the length of the uh, sequence of the animation. So I render those guys out and that gives me basically a mask file of, of, of where the water and the sand interact with each other. So that's pretty straightforward. And then what I do is um, I jump into something like Premiere, After Effects, or even Composite, or Smoke, or any, Nuke, anything, basically, and we're going to start doing some time effects on this. So for this demo, I'm just going to do something really simple, like just a, um, a time offset using an echo, but you could basically go through and take one frame and then fade it off manually or do some masking stuff. You could get really complicated with how you do these time-based effects, but for this example, I'm just going to do something really simple like um, an echo effect, um, which almost every application will have inside of it, and it's just a fast, easy way to demo the, this. So if we jump into video effects and then jump down here to time and grab this echo and just, you know, shove that guy on there and just sort of move forward in time as this kind of scrubs through here, if we take this echo and we give it something like number of echo frames, I don't know, 12 frames, something like that, and then give it a little bit of decay of something like 0.8, you'll see that that's going to start to build off these sort of echoed maps, right? And you can play around with how you want these guys to, to kind of mix together. Um, you know, basically what we're building here is a nice little delay effect of that water sort of echoing off after it, after it timestamps itself on there. So to smooth that out, obviously um, I can go ahead and just add a little bit of blur in there or something like that. You know, you want to get rid of those little steps that you see in that. So we'll just go back up here and just add a simple... Um, you know, blur on that guy. It doesn't have to be a big blur, maybe like five pixels or something like that. So that will essentially give me now um, a file that's going to have this sort of decay, like kind of bleed off effect happening to it. So render this guy out again as a 1K map. And what we're going to do is we're going to load that back into Maya now. So if we jump back over to Maya, we've got our, we've got our, our scene here. Let's just jump back to our master layer we don't want to be in that black and white layer anymore. And I'm going to blow away this actual full piece of geometry that I can texture and render and just bring in a GPU cache just um, for performance. So if we import in a GPU cache, I've got frame 75 to 100 already saved out. So we'll load that guy up. It'll take just a second to, to cache that in. So we'll just go frame... 75 to 125 is a good range where we'll, we'll see some cool effects happening here. So we'll just sort of scrub through this guy. So you can see there's our water. So now what we want to do is we want to take this piece of geometry and on this piece of geometry we want to go ahead and just, you know, really quickly, oops, we want to really quickly add to this a, um, a projection 
from the point of view of that camera. So we're gonna we're gonna add a, a 2D texture file or a texture file onto this guy, and I'll just I'll just map it into uh, to the color for now. So we'll go ahead and we'll map that guy with a file. If you right click on this, instead of just making it a 2D texture, we're gonna say create as a projection, and then we're gonna shove into that guy our map that we just rendered out. So we've got those guys right there. We'll tell it to uh, to use an image sequence, pretty straightforward. And right now, what this projection is doing is it's it's just projecting across. It's just a planar projection um, by default. So we're going to change that, right? We don't want it to be just you know some some planar projection. We actually want to be the uh, perspective camera projection. And all these projection maps are actually newly supported in in version uh, 2015 of Maya. So that they show up in viewport 2.0, which is which is pretty cool. So if we go to our options for this guy and just switch it to be uh, camera shape one, and just for uh, the look of this guy, we'll just invert this guy, It'll look a little bit better there. So now what we've got, if we start to scrub through this, is you know this really cool water time-based effect. Now I could render this out again as a as a map file that's black and white and then use it in post to um, do color correction or sharpening or things like that or I could just use this as an element in my shading graph or shader tree to, to darken or lighten or add specularity or reflections in certain areas but it's just a simple trick to go ahead and get this sort of um, you know wet look sort of a little time delay effect happening. So that's pretty much it. It's really uh it's not a it's not a hard thing to do and the end result actually looks pretty uh pretty cool. So thanks again for watching. Um hopefully you guys can find uh can find a use for this workflow. Cheers.